This is how our repository looks like on the inside. These are our shellac records. We have the 2-inch magnetic tapes, beta cams, VHS, and there are a lot more. Hi, I'm Joshua Lim. You're watching The Library Report, a series where we explore the illuminating stories and colourful characters found within and beyond our libraries and archives. In this episode, we answer your burning questions about how audiovisual archiving work is carried out at the National Archives. Hi, I'm Ray and I'm an audiovisual archivist. I'm here today to answer some of your questions. Let's begin. What does your job involve? So amongst the things that we do includes collecting and managing our archives. So some of the things that we collect are public service broadcasts, PSBs, as well as donations from members of public. So how did you become an archivist for audiovisual records? So for me, I actually graduated from film school. So it feels very natural, like I've come one full circle from conceptualizing to producing and now preserving and archiving our AV records. How big is your team? We have about 11 people on our team. Digital preservation and digitization work is handled by our colleagues at the Sound and Moving Images Lab. So we work very closely with them. What do you do in a typical work day? I would be looking through TV and radio listings for any live programs that needs to be recorded. So this would be recorded for our off-air recordings for our archives. Some of these include the National Day rallies and the National Day parades. Apart from that, I would also be appraising any incoming donations and handling the transfers of public service broadcasts for accessioning into our database. How are the archives organised? Each unique record is assigned an identification number for tracking and stored in our repositories and our media asset management systems. So that was a sticky mat which keeps our repository floors clean and now a warm welcome to our repository. Let me show you around. So this is how our repository looks like on the inside and each shelf contains different formats. If you want to see how we organise the materials, let me show you. These are our shellac records and each item is organised according to their unique identification numbers. What are the different content and formats stored in the audiovisual archives? Good question. Off the top of my head, we have the 8mm, 16mm, 35mm, we have 1 inch magnetic tapes, we have the 2 inch magnetic tapes, open reels, shellacs, we have vinyls, DVDs, CDs, cassettes, DV cams, beta cams, Blu rays, VHS, and there are a lot more. Are there any environmental controls in our archives to prevent the degradation of records? Yes, of course. One of them is the thermohygrograph, which shows the temperature and humidity levels. So this is to ensure that our repositories adhere to international standards for audiovisual preservation. What is the most interesting collection you have come across in the archives? There are actually many interesting collections that we have, but one of which is our ETV series. Let me show you. There you go. This is the Educational Television Series. You remember CDIS, the Curriculum Development Institute of Singapore. If you remember watching all those videos in the past in schools, this one's on angles, so this is one of the math uh, reels. It was used as a supplementary teaching aid. There you go. So this is a scotch reel. These are all like 2 inch magnetic tips. Another interesting collection that we have are the home movies actually. So we have a lot of donations from expats who used to work in Singapore. They actually shot a lot of footage of Singapore before they left and went back home. It's thanks to them that we have all this footage of old Singapore. What do you do when you come across audiovisual records that have been damaged? Before we acquire any 
audiovisual items and materials, we actually have to appraise them first and check the condition. So if the condition of it is really bad, then we might not be able to take those in. But if it is salvageable, then we are able to take it in, then we'll clean it and we'll store it properly and afterwards digitize them. How long can film reels, tapes and vinyl records last? It's actually not so much about how long they can last, but whether there are still any equipments available to access the contents within. But if you're talking about degradation of film reels or our assets, it depends on two factors. First is how it's handled. Next is how it's stored. What is the oldest audiovisual record in the archives? We actually have two of the earliest sound recordings that was recorded in Singapore in 1903 by the Gramophone Company. Let me show you. So these are shellac records, which are the predecessors of the vinyl records. The performance on these records came from around the region, which shows that Singapore was a convenient place for original performers to gather and record music. The title is Lagu Dari Nandong Sayang. Have you come across any material that was surprising in the archives? One of the records that's really interesting is from the ETV collection, which we found while we were curating for our Me Watch series. The title is The Lady Precious Dream, and watching it, we were all very surprised at how they enunciated themselves. I do think it's too heavy for them. Why don't you ask my brothers-in-law to remove it? So you should go check it out on MeWatch, it's, it's up there. Movie directors like Christopher Nolan still prefer film over digital. Which do you prefer personally? For me, I have to say that my love is still film. Nothing beats the physical copy and touching it and, and looking at it. But if I were to shoot a movie, I'm sorry, I'm going digital because I am still new to it. it I, I would really appreciate the immediate feedback that I get from digital. And of course, it's a lot cheaper to produce and I get to play with more digital and visual effects. What's the most challenging part about being an audiovisual archivist? I think it would be selecting and sieving out um, materials for preservation and managing the collection, managing the archives, which includes digitalization, storage and managing the access and all of it on an increasingly large scale. And that's why it, it gets very stressful. <laughs> What's your favourite part about being an audiovisual archivist? For me, it is looking at old film reels and trying to figure out what it's about, doing research from the bottom up when there's very little information and trying to figure out what the content is and whether we should preserve it and I enjoy that a lot. Another aspect that I'm interested in is to preserve old film reels. So the cleaning part of it and the digitization part of it. So I'm looking forward to doing more of that hands-on work. How can Singaporeans contribute materials to the archives? So we also have community-driven initiatives like the Citizen Archivist Project, of which we have Soundscape. So Soundscape is a platform where members of public can collect sounds of Singapore and upload it onto the platform for sharing. So the Soundscape project was created because the soundscape of a place changes even within two weeks. It would sound different. Some sounds that we actually hold very dear in our memories but we forget are like the ice cream man and, and who here remembers the, the karanguni man? Because my neighbourhood, we don't hear it anymore. We don't hear the karanguni sounds anymore. The horns and the karanguni, kotesiki sounds, we don't hear it anymore. Just because of um, an event like, like COVID and the manner of collecting uh, recycled items has changed. So all these sounds have disappeared. So if we don't collect this, one by one, all these sounds would just disappear. That's the value of soundscape. What are some of your hobbies? For me, 
Collecting things is what I really enjoy doing. So I collect tea, tea wares. I collect old books, old materials, films. So that's why I was really attracted to this job scope, this job role, because the idea of collecting old films and, and old formats really excites me a lot. That's all of our questions for today. Thank you for watching this episode of The Library Report. Leave a like or comment to let us know what you think. If you liked what you saw today, please hit the subscribe button. See you next time!